Hi, I'm Dr. Rich, world-renowned robotic surgeon. Can a 20-year-old make a surgical robot in his house during COVID? I don't think so. Let's check out Michael Reeves' video. Da Vinci Surgical System is the most advanced streamlined surgical experience for minimally invasive surgery available in the world today. I can build that. No, you can't. Intuitive Surgical is the company that makes the Da Vinci robot. Uh, there are thousands of robots, tens of millions of surgeries that have been done for over two decades in this country. They've got a bit of a head start, but let's check it out. Global health crisis going. My house is on full goddamn quarantine and I'll probably be dead in a week anyway. What better way to spend free time right now than to help the medical industry? Now I can't do any chemistry or biology or like body stuff, yuck, but I can do robotics. And let me tell you, those Da Vinci surgery robotics rat bastards are ripping hospitals off. Look at this, $2 million for one robot. They could spend that on a couple hundred bandages or like one ambulance ride in the US. We can build a better surgery robot for a lot less. Come on. So on the one hand, surgical robotics is an amazing technology that's completely transformed the way that we do surgery. Uh, it allows for surgeons to be more precise and give better outcomes for their patients. It costs money. Everything, every technological investment costs money and all technology actually goes down in cost over time. Uh, the price he's looking at is from two generations ago for the robot despite the fact that we have a hundred time better technology, the newest robot is less expensive than the robot from two generations ago. Also, costs, healthcare costs of medicine are crazy. Uh, you can spend $1,100 for a Band-Aid for an ER visit. The healthcare system is basically broken, but that's a topic for another day. The biggest flaw in Da Vinci's design is that it relies on these clunky, slow robotic arms for movement. Say you're operating on a patient's foot. He starts screaming out in pain. You gotta get up to his face, smack him around a little bit, make him shut up. Good luck with these robotic arms they're slow as and they don't have any travel distance instead we're gonna mount the surgical tools to a rail system that can move anywhere on the operating table hey look it's past michael you know it took him five whole days to 3d model and this is what i'm assuming is a teenager 20 something with an extreme amount of expertise in building things technology robotics from a practical standpoint with no understanding of how surgery would work or medicine or to his own point, body medicine, biology. You actually want a technology that is capable of having ultra precise, tiny little movements. You want movements that you would do if you were operating with your hands to be reduced and miniaturized to tiny little instruments that have tiny little movements to amplify and give your own hands more dexterity than you could have if you're doing open surgery. Here's what the final carriage looks like. Got the motor very professionally hooked up to the driver board, which is hooked up to my computer. So we can see what this thing can do. Okay, so this is the like calibration sequence. It needs to do this before it actually runs. Oh, that's so fucking sick. Oh, I think it, it should be a little faster though. Uh, oh, okay, the motor has default parameters, so you can just turn those off. Okay, let's try it out now. No. Oh, bad, 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 bad. All right, so, and this is all fine and good and fun if you're using robotics for manufacturing or trying to make a scary movie or something like that. So a quickly moving apparatus on a rail system would have zero practical application in an operating room. <laughs> that's good, that's, that's fast. Now right there. Whoa, it's pretty cool. We just gotta put a few of these in there and it looks like this. I did the quirky little snap teleportation thing, right? That was three weeks ago. I'm f***ing tired. But I built this test platform out of aluminum and wood that I stole from my girlfriend's bed frame. It's not like I can go to Home Depot on quarantine. Yeah, you can make it, you can make it do this maybe not as stable as you'd want it to be, but yeah, it's just a prototype. Yeah, so super unstable. I will say I'm, I'm pretty impressed with his ingenuity, computer programming, technical skills of being able to design something that can slide up and down. Just not replacing a surgical robot anytime soon. So I'm controlling it with my mouse right now. It looks jerky and awful, but it's actually got a really good amount of precision to it. It's kind of going in a circle from the top down view. Like I said, this is not the final surgery robot. I'll just clarify, so precision in terms of some industrial equipment moving boat containers from a dock to a truck that's a different definition of precision than the millimeters worth of precision that you would need as you're dissecting a lymph node off the aorta and if there's any one millimeter one side or the other you get a 
catastrophic life-threatening events. So precise, but not in the terms of what you would need for surgery. Behold the superior surgery robot, you Da Vinci tins. It's got the cum. It's got the cable management. But Michael, does it even work? Does it work? <laughs> does it work? I don't know if it works. I haven't turned it on yet. Oh God, oh please. Yeah, okay. Please don't break it. Yeah. All right, the machine's working. Now we can start to control it. But Michael, where's the controller? F you, you are the controller. I got this VR hand tracking camera off of Amazon that works super goddamn well. So you just take the hand coordinates from this, pipe them in the surgery robot, and bing, bang, boom. <laughs> that, I mean, that's pretty amazing. So clearly just from an innovation knowledge technical and wanting to get something done and having the stamina to, I guess during COVID, everybody had needed a hobby to put this together is just miraculous. Nothing short of amazing. And I, I love this, uh, moving your hand and translating those into the movements of the machine. Still not ready for surgical robotics. Oh, boom. F you dimension robot. Commencing the operation. <laughs> Operate on it. Surgery <laughs> over here now. Um, it's got the scrubs. Again, if you're in a fruit processing plant and you have to build an expensive piece of equipment to uh, use a knife to open a pineapple, maybe a reasonable innovation. Draw the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Draw the Mona Lisa. Ah! Okay. Oh, I got the paint, I got the paint. I... That's a little racist looking, Lily. I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna pressure you, but this is supposed to show how accurate my machine is. <laughs> We're gonna go for like a laparoscopic appendectomy. So if we just make a okay. small incision above the chest here, uh, we can, fuck, okay. A uh, little bit more difficult for some procedures, but not, fuck. You can see you still have a lot more accurate control than a lot of surgical systems. Fuck, ah. That's horrifying, but it actually, I think, brings up a very good point because what is a surgical robot for? So in this example, he was actually taking a giant kitchen knife and doing a huge laparotomy to expose the appendix to remove it. That's actually not what robotics are for. Robotics don't have anything to do with skin incisions. You still, as the surgeon, make little tiny skin incisions with a scalpel and the abdominal wall, and then you use the robot to manipulate these long tubular instruments that have little hand graspers on the inside and then your finger movements at the robot console are translated into smaller movements at these little uh, instruments at the end of the robot arms. But that brings up a great point. I mean, the general public may not have any understanding of what the surgical robot's for. So robots are designed to keep you from having big open incisions. So Michael's robot is just attaching a knife to an arm and just doing a huge movement. So that that's, um, if you were gonna do that, you could just do that with your own hand. The point of robotics is to keep you from having a big open incision, a lot of blood loss, a long recovery, trauma, tissue trauma, and only use little tiny keyhole incisions with you that you make with your hand and put the robot instruments through those incisions. Would you add this to your hospital? Do you think hospitals could adopt? Uh. Seems a little dangerous. Okay, I appreciate the feedback. You're wrong. This study is to see if we can bring someone from zero skill level all the way up to the ability of a surgeon. So just put your hand out. <laughs> Could you just put your hand out above the thing? <laughs> so higher up controls the knife position. You can move it further closer and it'll get further away from you. We're gonna make a small incision right above the ear. <laughs> The average surgeon goes about 40,000 hours of training and residency before they can actually be signed off to independently do surgery and operate on people. Um, although the robot does shorten the learning curve. So as the surgeon, you can transition from open or laparoscopic surgery and offer your patients these uh, minimally invasive option, little tiny incisions with a faster recovery. Your progress as a surgeon is going to take you less time to get through that learning curve than if you did just with what's called straight stick laparoscopy or just doing the keyhole incision, holding the instruments yourself, as opposed to using the computer assisted surgery, which is what robotics is. Summer six, this summer six. Okay, so you're doing it wrong. I don't even know what surgery this is supposed to be. So the moral of the story is you can be a complete genius in one area, computer programming, robotics, and have zero knowledge in another area. So for all of our viewers who are planning on making their own surgical robot and doing surgery at home, please don't do that. 
can't trust you with that. We can trust you with going down and hitting the subscribe button and turning on your notifications. We'll see you next time.